I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breasts, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palms of my hands, the need for my care, because I'm a woman. Phenomenally. I'm a woman, that's me. Guess who? A woman is the only thing I'm afraid of that I know will not hurt me. You'll be surprised. I was 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. Wow. A woman is the only thing I'm afraid of that I know will not hurt me. I'm going to turn it over to our moderator. Thank you guys for putting up with me. I'm going to be the lone man to sit down. It's all yours. Hey, hey. Uh -huh. Um, thank you all for being here. Thank you for inviting me to partake in this wonderful, with this wonderful panel of women. Um, thank you for putting this together so we can come together and talk about this issue. I want to begin by saying that um, I'm going to talk specifically about my experiences of black clergy women, the power and importance of black women in the church, and the lack of leadership in which we find them is still still a matter of racism and patriarchy that is still a normative in most of our churches today. There are churches where women cannot be ordained still as pastors, but this, I believe, can and must change. There are churches that treat black women in pastoral leadership as the least of the least, and this must and can change. There are progressive churches that think hiring one black woman or possibly yes. two in associate positions sets them well and high above the rest. Mm -hmm. And numerically speaking, <laughs> this may be true. Mm -hmm. But the mindset that black women can only serve as associates mm -hmm. or in secondary or supportive roles is highly problematic. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, it is not of God. This to can and it must change and it starts with each and every one of us being god's transformers and change agents in god's blessed name and for god's people every single one of god's people that is each and every one of us here and those who are not here and that is what i want to share with you today. and i have witnessed I've experienced sexism and witnessed racism and homophobia and, and um, heteronormative and cisgender cisprendency and, and all sorts of forms of systemic oppression and I'd like to be able to say that what we here in the church are all free of that, but I'm not going to tell that lie. Um, I could, yes, it's obvious that there's racism, sexism, and oppression of LGBT folk in conservative churches, but if you think it's only in the conservative churches, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's just more, it, it's just a little more sanitized in the progressive churches. Mm -hmm. um, a little, a little, a little bit. A little, a little. It's a little bit. It's a little bit more sanitized in the progressive churches, but we still have got um, a tremendous way to go. So I am very grateful for the conversation that we're having today. I'm very grateful to, to Maranatha for putting it together. I hope this will be the beginning of many conversations about how we can get down to the nitty gritty. Reverend Forbes talked this morning about um, the devil's subjunctive and the and, and God's you know affirmative indicative of right. So many people I know have received God's indicative and still are struggling against the church's subjunctive, okay? The church's subjunctive. Well, if you're really called to do this, right? Well, if this is really God's will for your life, and sometimes the last place that you can be affirmed is is um, within the church. But I'll just say that if Maranatha is about anything, as I understand it, it's about love. Yes. Amen? Well, isn't that what you're all about? You're all about love, right? And the Bible tells us the perfect love casts out what? Fear, right? So that's 
what I would like to celebrate about you. You're here because of love. And by choosing love and by rooting yourselves in love and inviting others to come along with you and root ourselves in love, I believe that we can't cast out the fears that are leading us to be oppressive toward one another and to have the courage to face our own hearts and to dismantle the ways in which we demonize one another. Did I not raise you for better? How many times have I told you you have to be what? You have to be what? Twice. What? Twice as good. Twice as good as them to get half of what they have. We have our quotes, and so I want to raise your hand if you can finish this quote. You have to work twice as hard to what? To be half as good. To be half as good. And what does that mean? It means that there, if there's inequity, and so as either a person of color, a woman, or someone of a different sexual orientation, your effort is not going to be recognized unless it is absolutely superlative. And then it will be seen as half. <laughs> Thank you. So growing up um, in Staten Island, I grew up in an all-white, uh, actually very hostile racial neighborhood. And this was the ethos of, of my family. I had to be twice as good. I had to focus on the academics. My father moved us there because we were going to go to good schools. And the first house that he purchased was burned down. And I still moved to that neighborhood. So it was a very hostile environment. Um, and so I offer that because um, I just think it's an important framework following what I felt I needed to explore and to share with the world. Um, so I want to go back to the, the quote, you have to be twice as good to get half. And the question that I often ask as a child, and I do now, is half of what? What is the reward for all of this, for moving to Staten Island in the context of my family, for all the sacrifices that were made in the material world? you know, we're trying to enter a system that we did not create. And so how far can we really get? And what what's the cost? And I don't have an answer for that. It's just a question that I actually ask myself, particularly as a mom trying to figure out how to raise my son. I faced in particular you. So how do you deal with that? Thank you. I'm, I'm so honored to, to be with you this afternoon. And I want to talk with you about navigating and negotiating narratives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are so many levels of narratives that all of us deal with, but especially when we are women in ministry. Women, LGBT individuals, and individuals of color, we have an even harder challenge. So just keep loving people. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of it is, it deepens within our capacity mm -hmm. to love. And, and these, these are my love like we've never been hurt. Mm -hmm. It is that kind of love that we have to have in order to push the church forward. We are in this moment, I think, where we can be change agents, but we've got to do our challenging of people in ways that also help them know that they are loved. We have the opportunity, and I, I can tell you from, from my own story, I've had to get clear about my narrative about who Carrie mm -hmm. Jackson is. Mm -hmm. Not what other people say or think or imagine or fantasize or fear. Mm -hmm. So that as I am, and each of us, navigating these varieties of narratives, that I can be clear about my own story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and be clear to present that story in the context of all of these other narratives. Mm -hmm. And if love did not have the last word, progressive Christians mm -hmm. in this room and beyond, I give thanks to God for you. Mm -hmm. 
And there is a need to make sure that when you bring on someone who is a person of color or a woman or LGBT person, that it is not out of some sense of self-congratulation. Yes. 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 Look at how yes. wonderful we are. Yes. 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 But calling people because of the gifts that God has placed in them. So ultimately, what I was taught, that my gifts would make a way, mm -hmm. that is a critical narrative, but it cannot operate by itself. Okay. Everyone in the world has gone to bed one night or another with fear or pain or loss or disappointment. And yet each of us has awakened, arisen, uh, somehow made our ablution, seen other human beings, and said, Morning, how are you? Fine, thanks in you. It's amazing. Wherever that abides in the human being, there is the nobleness of the human spirit, despite it all, black and white. Asian, Spanish, Native American, pretty, plain, thin, fat, vowed a celibate, we rise. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute, a built to suit, a fashion model size. When I start to tell I say it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride in my steps, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman. Of my 